They're on there. Okay, well, maybe we'll just give everyone another minute or two. It's 116. Welcome, everyone. This topic today is going to be on telecoil. Those induction loop systems you may have heard of, for example, like in Van Wazel, Florida Studio Theater, some of your local churches, um, public, public areas around town. Sarasota is actually very ahead of the game, I would say, on loop um, telecoil systems. They have by far one of the one of the most buildings looped in the country. So this is going to be a good one for specifically for, for Sarasota. And towards the end, I'll also have a um, list of items if you'd like to, to see which areas have loops and which ones don't. So all right, it's 117. Don't see anyone else coming in, so why don't we get started? Okay. So, uh, has anyone, does anyone really kind of understand a telecoil loop type system? Not really. Okay, so let's kind of keep it from the basics. Okay. So, next slide will kind of go into that. So, how does telecoil work? So a telecoil is kind of like an antenna in a hearing aid. Some hearing aids have them, some do not. Um, I'm going to mute some of you guys. I can kind of hear myself talk. There we go. And then if you just want to, you can ask to unmute. Um, I wish I could see all you guys, but so, so this is a telecoil system. So the telecoil acts somewhat like an antenna for your ear. Um, it has a little rod in the center of it with a coil wrapped around it, hence the name telecoil. And what it does is it amplifies sound inside the certain induction loop that they can set up either on a ceiling or in the ground under the carpet. And as long as you're within that loop, you can hit a, a specific program in your hearing aid and connect into their audio system. So obviously it's a very, very efficient way and clear way to get a signal across directly into someone's hearing aids without it traveling around a room and bumping around everywhere else and then hitting the hearing aid microphones and going in your ear. So Telecoil has been around a very long time. Uh, it's been around at least 25 years. Europe, it's used quite a bit. Uh, public railway stations, uh, things like that. It's already been well versed there. Um, had a hard time getting it in, in the States for some reason, but I'm seeing more and more of this coming along. So it's not anything new. It's just a question of if you have enough real estate in your hearing aid to have that feature put in, because it does take up a little bit extra room. And obviously a big reason for telecoil, which I'll explain later on in this presentation, it helps improve the signal that you'd like to hear and reduce all the noise and unwanted background noise that you don't. So that's kind of where this really kicks in. So your hearing care provider can set this up two ways. Either we could set it up directly where I cannot have any of your microphones on. In other words, you're just streaming in whatever's going on in the coil and it's clear as day, or I can access it where you get the streaming and your microphone's on so you can hear the people that are directly beside you or around you. So there's two ways we can kind of do this. Okay, good. I'll just keep moving on and then I'll kind of unmute everyone and see if I can get everyone back towards the end. Okay, whoops. I didn't want to go that far. I want to go all of a sudden go. So, where can you use the telecoil? You can only use it in that loop system where it's installed. So it's very important to kind of know which environments and which buildings have it. And the main thing you want to look for when you walk up to, for example, if you walk up to the front of Van Wazel and go to their box, uh, box office, you'll see a sign just like this one here that you'll see, a blue ear with a little green, uh, 
white line through it with a T on the bottom right. That's the international symbol for Telcoa. So that's a quick and easy way for you to know if it's supported there or not. And it's becoming much more popular, like I said. Many churches around town have it, public universities, even some taxi cabs in London and some of the big cities have it. So airports have it too. So keep an eye on that as we start to get, get more open for traveling. Computer is ultimately slow. So how do you really know where Telecoil is available? Well, I just told you and um, what to look for internationally for the for the symbol. But also, I think it'd be good for some of you, um, if you're interested in finding out what this Telecoil is, uh, feel free to ask when I'm done. I know everybody's muted, but I can probably tell you pretty quickly which ones are have telecoil and which ones don't. For example, most all rechar direct rechargeable devices have telecoil already in them, so that's an easy one. But if you're interested in finding other places around town that do have it, there's a website here called www.loopfinder.com. You can actually type in your city. Let's see if this link works. I tried to do this yesterday and it worked, but. Nope, connection's not private. It's not liking me. Well, what it has in it is, so what it has in it is a area where you can put in the city where you're in, and then it gives you a list of the facilities or buildings that it has, so you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want. I will say this, not all places have everything looped. In other words, for example, if you think about Van Wezel, that's a pretty big area. All of the seats at Van Wezel are not looped. Everything from, I think, row A to about K is, and then the top part is not. So you have to sometimes ask if they're a bigger facility, which areas might be within that telecoil system and which areas are not. And obviously, you'd want to, if you want to utilize it, you got to be kind of in that loop, right? Got to be in the loop. So, I wanted to know this is kind of a quick, quick one. This is more probably questions to answer. So I tend to, I'm going to try to unmute everyone now. And um, any questions you may have, I'll be happy to answer. I'm going to actually stop sharing.